On today's episode of The Joy of Editing, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. I'll be doing a floral painting. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and let's jump into this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Hey, by the way, you can still purchase Topaz Studio 2. I'll have a link in the description below this video. You can just click on that. It's hard to find, but it's still available. And who knows, if we keep bugging Topaz, maybe they'll come up with a new version of Topaz Studio 2, possibly Topaz Studio 3. So leave comments and let Topaz know you want this great piece of software to continue to be developed. It'd be a real shame if they let this great product go by the wayside. So I hope you're listening, Topaz. We want this product. Well, enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, you can download this image. This is a stock image. I left a link for you in the description below this video. So you can grab this image and, you know, watch the video first. And then if you have Topaz Studio 2, or if you don't, pick it up. And then you can follow along with me. By the way, Topaz Studio 2 can be used as a standalone app. I like to use it as a plugin in Photoshop because I like to use Photoshop to kind of do different things for me, like masking. Sometimes I'll use luminosity masks and so on on these images. But I want to go ahead and start out by changing the direction of this image, horizontally speaking, that is. And I'll show you what I mean. If you'll come up to the menu in Photoshop and click on Image, and come down to image rotation and I want to flip the canvas horizontally so I'm going to click right here and now you notice it's going in a different direction now the second thing I want to do is crop the image because I don't like the crop and there's some kind of lines down the right and the left side here which I don't like so I'm going to type C which is the shortcut for the crop tool I'm in a 4 by 5 or 8 by 10 crop and what I'll do is drag this over like this. I want to make sure I miss that line right there. I think I'm going to pull down from the top a little bit and then maybe continue to drag this over to the right, maybe somewhere right around there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit larger. And I think that will work. And then you can just click on this check here to accept the crop. But you know what? I think I'm going to pull this end in, the left side in more. I think I'm just going to grab just to the edge of that flower right there. I think that looks better. And now I'll click the check again. Now, do you see this light area right here, this out of focus area? That's really light and it bugs me. It's drawing my eye, so I'm gonna get rid of it. So I'm gonna use the object selection tool. If you come over to the tool wheel, you're gonna find it there. I'm in the lasso mode and I'm just gonna draw a selection around here and see if the AI in Photoshop can grab this just like that. And you notice how it went around the flower here. Now this is something new in the latest versions of Photoshop. If you right click and you come down here to where it says delete and fill selection, just click that and it will fill that in. And it does a pretty good job. Now it messed up here. So I'm going to grab my spot healing tool. Just type your J key. That's a shortcut. And I can kind of get rid of that by just painting over it like that. And it does a really good job in this little area here. I'll just fix a little bit here. And maybe here I don't like this. And all I'm really doing here is prepping this image to get it ready to be turned into a painting in Topaz Studio 2. This little light area up here, I'm going to paint over it a couple times here and just see if I can get rid of it. Yeah, and I think that's going to look okay. And now I think we're ready to go into Topaz Studio 2. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer. You can do a Command or Control J to duplicate it because you never want to take in the background layer into Topaz Studio 2. You want to keep that safe. Let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. So come up here to Filter and find Topaz Studio 2. Click it and that launches it and we will be underway. We'll start by coming up to Add Filter. So click on that and we're going to come to the Stylistic section. And I'm just using a couple filters today. One of my favorites, as you know, is the impression filter. So let's click on the impression filter. We have all these different strokes we can try. So you can just click on them and see what kind of result you're getting. Now you see all these flecks in here, and I always point this out in my videos. If you drag this long bar down the whole way, down to texture and keep dragging that bar down, see where it says original, see those white flecks. Now you could change the color of those flecks. Uh, sometimes you want that in there to like show the canvas coming through, but you can come here and like 
change its color to uh, a different color, like maybe like a warmer tone like that. See now they're warm flex. I'll click OK. But I don't want that. I'm just clicking original and those flex go away. And then you can drag this bar back up to the top. And now we're going to find a paint stroke. So I just like to click through these and see which one I like. And I ended up with this one right here, type 12. I really liked what that was doing, but I'm not done because I have a lot more adjustments that I can make here. And now we come here to the number of strokes. Now you have low, medium, and high. Now, if you do low, you're going to get less strokes. It looks a little more abstract, medium, a little more detail, and high, you get a lot more detail coming through. I chose medium, so we're going to click on medium. And now we have a bunch of different adjustments we can make in here. And I highly recommend that you play around with all these adjustments and see what they're going to do for you. I'm just going to show you the ones I used on this image today because if I get into all this stuff, this video will get really long. And I have other tutorials showing you how all this stuff works. But let's go ahead and play with the brush size. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start to drag it to the right and you see how the image changes and you may say, wow, that looks really awesome. Now that's not the look I was going for today, but I like it. It's very abstract. So you may want to try that and you don't have to do what I do, do what you want, but I'm just giving you an idea. And I took mine to like down to like around 32, I believe it was. And then paint volume. If you drag this to the right, you can see, see how you can start seeing the stroke showing through more. And I took mine to right here at a 20. Now here's a little tip. If you left click your mouse and hold it down, you'll see the before. And then when you release that left click, you'll see the after. Now I come to paint opacity. And if I drag this to the right, you can see how we can see that paint showing through a lot better as well. And I took mine to 72, which is right here. I did not use the next three sliders, stroke rotation, variation, and color variation, but play with those and see what they'll do for you. I sometimes use those and they come in really handy, but I didn't for this one. The next thing I used was stroke width. Now, if you take this to the right, it'll make your strokes wider. You see that? See how they're getting wider? If you take it to the left, they'll start to narrow out. And depending what you want, this is where it's fun. You just play. And I took mine to like right here. And then we have stroke length. And this makes your strokes longer. Now, I'll start to drag this to the right. And you can see how those strokes are getting longer or shorter, depending which way I go. And that's kind of cool, that effect right there. It looks kind of neat. So play with these because you just never know. You may like something. And I took mine to right about here, 58, right there. Again, I'm going to left click and hold down my mouse. There's the before and there's the after. So it's looking very painterly so far. The reason I call Topaz Studio to my creative toolbox is because you can do stuff like this. You can turn a photograph into a digital painting, and that is really remarkable to me. And there's so many other things that you can do, like doing a full edit on any photograph. There's so many powerful tools in here that I can't say enough about this program. Now, the next adjustment I use, and I'm going to slide this bar down, was coverage right here. Watch the edges of the image here. See all the painterly strokes in here. Watch when I start to drag this to the left. You see how they start getting less painterly here, but they're very low in detail, which I really like. But I like the coverage right there. And now we have coverage transition. If I start to drag it to the right, you'll notice it gets uh, more feathered as I go the whole way to the right. That's like maximum feathering on the transition. Then if I start to drag it into the left, the feathering gets less and less. See where it's only covering the center flower. But I'm going to take that transition and move it over to here, right around point 57. And I like that. I like how it tones down the painterly effect around the edges. I like the way that transition is working out. Let me drag this bar down further because I'll be getting into lighting. But before I do that, I love this slider here, Painting Progress. This lets you see, like when you start your image out, as a real painter would start to paint the image and it would change as they went. So I'm going to drag this painting progress the whole way to the left. And notice how the image changes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to drag it to the right. And there'll be a point where my eye says, yes, that's what looks really good. So I'm going to start to drag it to the right. And as soon as I get to, to a point that I really like, I'm going to stop. And let's see, right there, I like that. 
Now let me left click. Here's the before and here is the after. So man, that looks good. Next, I'm gonna go into lighting. To open up lighting, just click right here. And now we have brightness, contrast, highlights, and shadows. I'm gonna open up the brightness a little bit, lighten this up a little bit to maybe right here at a 10. I'm gonna give it a slight amount of contrast. So I'm gonna drag this to the right, just to right there, 0.05. I'm gonna pull back on the highlights a little bit. So I'm gonna take that back to maybe right about here. Whoops, I went too far, right there. 0.57 minus 0.57. And I just wanna open up the shadows a little bit. So if I drag this to the right, you can see those shadows really start to open up. And what I think I'll do is take it right here. 0.23. Let me left click again. Here's my before and here's my after and I like it. I want to use one more filter. So let's come up here to add filter and I want to use the precision detail filter just to pop a little bit of detail out in these painting strokes. This filter also comes in very handy on just regular photo editing. I like this uh, because you can really bring some detail out and you can bring detail out in overall areas, shadow areas and highlight areas. I'm just using overall areas, but notice how it breaks them down into small areas of detail, medium and large. This is a really, as I say, great filter and I highly recommend it. We're gonna start out with just overall small detail. I'll drag it over to the right so you can really see what it's doing. See all that detail it can pop out of there. I only wanna bring out just a little bit of that detail to maybe right here at around like 23. And now we have overall medium detail and I'm just gonna boost that. I'll drag it to the right so you can see what it's doing. See how it's working on the medium areas of detail? And I think I'll take it right here at a 0.31. And then finally, on overall large detail, if I drag it to the right, it's working with just larger areas of detail. But I'm gonna drag it to the left to remove some of the detail in the larger areas because it looks more painterly when I do that. And also, by the way, you also have these detail boosts on each one of these different sizes here. So you can boost that detail up if you need to. I don't use that too often, but it's there if you need it. Let's check the before and after out one more time. So here is the before and here is the after. Now all we need to do is send this into Photoshop and I have one thing to do in Photoshop and we will be done. So I'll just click accept and that'll send this into Photoshop and here we are. Now all I wanna do here in Photoshop is add a layer mask. So click this icon right here and that adds a layer mask. And now with a paintbrush and a black paintbrush at, uh, I'm just gonna type my B key to get my paintbrush. See, I have a nice large paintbrush there, 0% hardness. And then you can just use your left and right bracket keys to make it larger or smaller. But I think right around that size right there should be good. And I'm using an opacity of 30. So it's going to just remove a little bit of the effect right here on that center flower. So I'm just gonna left click with my mouse one time and you see that it just brings back a little bit of the original image from underneath, but it just gives that a little more detail right there. So here is the before and here's the after. Now, if you hold your shift key down and click on this layer mask, you can see what it looks like without that little gray spot in the center. Here it is, shift click. See, see all the extra painterly effect in there, but now when I shift click again, you can see it just removes a little bit of that and I think it looks good. I do have actually one more finishing touch and you see these light areas down in here, right here, 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 and up in here. I'm gonna put a blank pixel layer above this, so click on the little plus here and that puts a blank pixel layer. With your spot healing tool, just type J, that's the shortcut for the spot healing tool, and I'm just gonna paint over this and make sure you have sample all there's checked or that won't work. I'm gonna paint over that area again, over this little light spot, and look, we can clean these up. And that spot healing tool works really well. This little light dot here bothers me, and this little light area right here. In fact, this is bothering me now too, so I'm just gonna paint over this little light area here. Maybe hit it a couple times, and now, eh, even right there. And now I think I'm happy. So, overall, we've come from here. I'm holding my Option or Alt key down and clicking on the background layer. We've come from here and now we end up here with this nice painting of this photograph that we've turned into a painting, I should say, by using Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and hopefully yours as well. 
Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one today. I even added a digital frame using Topaz Studio, too. It makes some really great digital frames. Hey, if you enjoyed this one today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then when I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.